Good morning. How are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today I want to run you through Flopzilla Pro and show you all around this awesome software. If you're just getting started with it for the first time, just got your own copy, this is the exact video you need to watch through. I'll try to make it quick and easy, but I really want to show you the tools and features within Flopzilla Pro that you 100% want to understand and think about using. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so let's zoom in and really look at Flopzilla Pro over on the left of the UI we have our saved ranges over here we have the range of hands that we're assigning for our opponents at any given moment in the middle here we have the board so enter in the flop turn and river as applicable here is the analysis section which will populate once we start plugging in the other information and over here we have our dead cards so for most people they are going to do a basic exploration of their hand versus their opponent's range and you would plug in your whole cards right here in the dead card section and then finally is the pie chart section over here which is my personal favorite thing added to flopzilla pro and if you don't have it right off the bat hit the gear icon click the or turn on the use group mode at startup and then close it and then that will get added there every single time you start up the software and i'll show you how we use that in a couple minutes now when you start using flopzilla pro to analyze hands the most important thing you can do is enter in your opponent's range as best as you possibly can so zooming in here we can enter it just by clicking in hands manually you can also just hold the mouse button down and just drag around you can clear things out just add suited hands just add broadway hands that kind of stuff you can also hold the control Control key and then say hit deuces and it'll plug everything else above it or say ace five suited same concept holding that control key and throw in from there when you're in here it's important to know what other information is coming up so you notice down below it shows you the number of combos in that range in this situation that's 180 and it also shows you the percentage form of that range which in this case is 13.6 which means of all of the possible starting hands 13.6 percent of them are selected in this range right here a couple of other things to note here is that you can also add in weights so let's just say that you wanted to plug in hands that only have 50 percent so you think they're only going to have this hand 50% of the time preflop based upon whatever action they took. Change that down to 50%, click into a hand, and you notice you get that little weighted bar right there that lets you know that that hand is now weighted at 50%, and you can even do multiple weights. So you wanted another one for 20%, and you can click on that. Again, you notice a different bar for each of those. Another thing you can do is you can use the suit selection down here. So let's just say you're on a in a spot and you think hey I, I really only want to filter for times they have a heart in their hand you can click on all of those and then click on the appropriate hands that you want to filter that for hit apply selection and you notice that that little green tab on the corner lets you know that you did everything appropriately and now you're good to go so when you hover over it you see exactly what you want and unfortunately because I had a weight on it's also weighted as well as suit selected but it is what it is so it allows you a lot of granularity when it comes to exploration and really building their range as precisely as you possibly can. And then the last thing I want to note about ranges is that you can save and load them very, very easily. So let's just say for whatever reason you find this to be a good range of hands, you can just simply go over here, click in, go to add a range, let's just call it trashy, accept it, and there it is. So in the future, if you're ever in here and you want to reload that range, you can just simply double click it and it's right there. If you only hover over it, it's not going to add it, it's just going to show you what it is. But if you double click it, it loads it right over here. And luckily, if you build a really bad range like this one, you can always just click it and delete it and it's gone just like that. And by the way, if you're seeing value in Flopzilla Pro already, you can always grab a copy. I have a custom edition of Flopzilla Pro available on my site, splitsuit.com slash Zilla. It comes not only with the software, which works on two Windows PCs, lifetime licenses, but it also comes with some extra training materials and also saved ranges. That way you can pre-populate these things very, very easily and get into it. And it will save you a tremendous amount of time of trying to add ranges manually pre-flop every single time you go to explore a new hand use those as a nice starting point. Again, splitsuit.com slash Zilla to learn more. So you may have already noticed that Flopzilla is actually already running analysis over in the middle based upon this range of hands, and it's looking at how this range is hitting all possible flops. A couple things you can do with this is, one, you can look at how does a typical starting hand that you like to play hit all possible flops. And in this situation, if we plug in pocket tens, we notice that it's going to have an overpair or be an overpair 25.14% of the time. It's going to be a pocket pair below top 
top pair 44.41% of the time, and so on. And this can be very helpful for seeing how common hands you like to play preflop tend to hit across all possible flops. Now you can do the same thing also for ranges. So say you wanted to plug in a 9% opening range for whatever reason, and you want to see how it hits all possible flops. Again, you can look over here and get all of that information very, very easily. And this is just one of the many powerful things that Flopzilla Pro can do. But keep in mind that this is only analyzing all possible flops. This is not looking at all possible boards, including turns of rivers. It's only flops. And one extra thing you can do if you want to get even more granular here is you can go up here when you have no board included already. You can hit the little bar chart icon over here and you can analyze specific flops that you want to look at. So you can look at just unpaired ones. You can look at pair boards. Boards. You can look at trip flops. You can look at, say, specifically, you want to look at unpaired flops that are at least jack high. You can look at that, and this will help you understand one, how often that's actually going to happen, and also two, how the overall hands are going to be impacted when you go through and you apply the current flop subset. By the way, there is a full video I did that goes into a lot more depth for using this flop breakdown tool. If you're interested, I'll leave a link for that in the description box or somewhere up there. All right, so I want to take a moment and run you through kind of a normal use case for this. That way you understand how to set things up. So I already talked about plugging in our opponent's range here, the board here, and our whole cards over here, and then looking at the analysis. But let's just say we're in this situation, right? So we're on a board. This guy raised preflop. He decides to see bet on jack five for rainbow. And here we are with 10 nine. And we're going to use Flopzilla to plug everything in. So we can plug in the board. So jack of spades, five of diamonds, four of clubs. Is that right? Yes. We have 10 nine of diamonds. So plug that right in over here. And let's just say for whatever reason, we think our opponent has this range of hands. Again, we're not really going to talk about whether this is good or bad, just showing you how to set it up. So one thing you really want to pay attention here in the middle is the analysis. So what's going on in this situation? And we notice if we kind of zoom in here, we have a breakdown of what our opponent's range is here, given our dead hole card. So assuming, of course, because we have the 10-9 of diamonds, he can't have 10-9 of diamonds. He can't have ace-10 of diamonds, all that kind of stuff. So this automatically factors all that. You don't have to manually add that into the range over here. And then we can start saying, okay, what are the hands we think they're going to see that with and include all of those. So all these grayed out ones are ones that are not going to get included in the range of hands that we're carrying through. And that's really the way we want to think about Flopzilla is thinking about the range they have. And then as each inflection point hammers out what they are going to have in that spot. So what they are continuing with as the hand progresses, since even in this situation right they decided to see bet here that means some of their hands are going to get see bet some of their hands are not going to get see bet so what we're curious about is what of their preflop hands see bet in this situation and as we're exploring the hand further and further breaking that hand range down getting thinner and thinner as you get more and more precise based upon their actions sizes and all that kind of fun stuff so if we're in Flopzilla, what we can do is just go in here and say, build all the hands we think they're going to see about with in this spot. Again, this is their preflop range. This is what we think they're going to see about with. And let's just say we think they're going to see about with middle pair or better. They're going to see about their draws. And let's say they're going to also bet their two card backdoor flush draws and they're going to check everything else so we think the blue hands are their continuance their c-betting hands and then the gray are all the hands we thought they were going to check with instead of firing the c-bet so in here down at the bottom what you can do is take this button click it and then it will turn green and notice over here it looks a little bit different and what it's showing you is hey these are all of the hands that you just selected that are getting included going onwards into the next action or onto the next street and that is very very helpful so you can say okay no no, no i don't think it's going to be that wide and you know you mess something up but ultimately make sure to click this in green when you're locked into your action for that street that's going to be the most important thing to get really good analysis going forward. And of course, you can get even more granular than this. And one of the things that people that like really granular exploration will want and be very happy about is that you can switch back and forth between combos and frequency very easily. So down here, you notice right now we have a frequency of 61.1%. Those are all of the 
hands from their original range that they are going to continue with based upon the filters that we selected. So we think they're going to have that C binding frequency of 61.1%. But if we hit the tab key, we can flip that over to combos. So if you like to work in combos, you can do that very simply by hitting the tab key. That's a very, very helpful feature for those that like it. And also groups is something that I would definitely suggest using at least some percentage of the time, especially the newer you are to thinking about ranges and how strong or weak a range may or may not be. So one of the things you can do over here is click a color. So let's just say we're going to choose green and we're going to choose all of their really, really strong hands and click them in green. So over pairs, two pairs, sets and straights. And notice over here in the pie chart area, we get to see exactly what their really strong hands are compared to everything else. So in this situation, we notice that of their overall range, 21.21% of them are going to be the over pair or better. If you wanted to say, take orange and make those all of the drawing combinations, so back doors, gut shots, open to straight draws, notice that is over there now. And you could do the same thing for other colors if you wanted, this is very, very helpful again if you're really getting started on thinking about ranges and seeing how often and what the density of really strong hands is compared to not so strong hands this could be a great way of visualizing that if you're a visual learner like i am and just for the record this is the way that you would continue using fobzilla throughout the hand so in this hand here decides to call turn is a three, they check. You could also go through Fobzilla and say, okay, turn is a three of hearts and build in their checking range in this situation. And again, lock it in. So if you think they're going to check with all of their really weak hands, let's just say no made hand. And you think they're going to check with middle pair and that's it. Again, you can click that in, see exactly what their checking range looks like. And then you are rocked in when you're looking at how they're going to react, either facing a bet or if they, if you check behind what they're range is going into the river card again it takes some practice to be able to build ranges really well but the more you work with a tool like fobzilla pro the easier and easier it's going to be and one thing i would definitely suggest as you're doing your own analysis is make sure to save your files up top you can just go to file save and you can just easily save this and the next time you want to analyze this spot it's very easy just to load it up just go to file then go to open and then find it on your computer i usually just dedicate a folder to fobzilla save Gives very, very helpful, especially if you want to analyze a hand later or if you want to send it to a friend so that way you guys can analyze a spot together. This can be very, very helpful. So this is kind of the normal use case for Flopzilla Pro, but you can also do some other really, really cool stuff. And one of the things that you definitely want to know how to use is multiplayer mode. So up at the top, you just hit this little multiplayer icon and you notice that the UI is going to change a little bit, but this is really, really good for being able to do some very intense analysis. So instead of thinking about our range, I'm sorry, our hand versus their range, this is how we would do our range versus their range or against multiple players. This is very, very helpful. So let's just clear out the dead cards here. And up top, we can add in our range of hands. Let's just say that we let's let's change the spot we're not going to explore the one that we were exploring a moment ago let's say that we're exploring a spot where we decided to three bet so we're taking a re-raise range of i don't know that and we think they are going to call with a range like this perfect and let's say the board is uh, king nine five sure so one of the things we can do is go through and do all of that same filtering we were doing before. We can just do it per range and same thing per street. We can also go through here and look at a couple of different things. Let's just say that we wanted to look at right this moment, a situation where we see bet and they called and we're not really going to get too granular with exactly what those are, but we can look at the hotness and hotness is very helpful for being able to see how often the next card is going to benefit one player versus the other. So if we're here and this is our C betting range for whatever reason, we notice that the Queens are not great for us, right? These are in red. This is pretty low equity but as we look at the other cards in the deck that could come off on the next street on the turn we notice that most of them are quite good for us 36 cards in the deck are going to increase our equity and 13 are going to drop it and this you can do for either player or if there are multiple players you can do the exact same thing you can also look at the equity graph and compare yours which is in blue to theirs which is in this lighter green color and you can also look at the equity matrix which looks at every single hand again in your range and looks 
looks at the equity that they have based upon the range that you assigned for your opponent. So as usual, it's very important to assign those ranges as best and precisely as you possibly can, but this is how you can go really, really in depth from hand versus range analysis to range versus range analysis. The one thing I definitely want to note here, especially if you're newer to Flubzilla Pro, is these numbers up here are the overall equity for each range. So obviously if you add those two up, they're both going to equal 100%. Just make sure when you're doing multiplayer analysis that you're very clearly selecting which range you're working through and trying to explore. Otherwise it can be very easy to end up with the inverse numbers and that's something that you definitely do not want to do. And by the way, these numbers are based upon the range that we have selected, the equity for a hand, which we see right there, but also the overall win percentage and the tie percentage is right there too. So again, this is how you can utilize the multiplayer mode in Flopzilla Pro. And I just wanted to rapid fire a couple things just in case you're interested or you're like, I didn't know you could do that. Uh, ranges are very simple. You just click down here and hit control C and you can copy them, paste them, send them to people, share them in discord, whatever it is. Very, very simple. You can also paste ranges in here if you have one. And if you wanted to say manually type in just a single hand, say, uh, I don't know, Jack of hearts, eight of hearts, you can do that, hit enter and you're good to go. And it will just have that single combo in there. So again, it does give you some extra granularity or if you're using a workbook or you're trying to share ranges with a friend, that is a way to do it. And again, making sure that you save your hands is very, very helpful and just exporting stuff. So we just talked about kind of grabbing the ranges. You can also uh, pull it right here. So it'll just make it so you can copy it. Let's just say that you have, I don't know, this range, go to command, go to text output, and you can just simply copy or you can also export the current stats. So it gives you that entire section from the middle. It makes it very easy if you wanna save that in say a spreadsheet or something like that. Very, very helpful as well. So again, kind of weird things that uh, more advanced users might want and you might wanna get used to using those features, especially if you're going to be saving and doing a lot of analysis, but this is definitely stuff that is very helpful if you're looking to get the most out of the software. And the final thing that I'll mention that Flopzilla Pro can do on top of probably some things I'm forgetting, but this will definitely give you the, the ballpark of it. Uh, one thing that's very advanced, so I'm not going to go through how to do it in this video, but you can sync this up with GTO Plus if you use that solver. And by the way, if you're interested in that, we do have a great GTO Plus bundle on redshippoker.com slash GTO. It'll take you right there and get you that software. Sync that up with Fobzilla, and you can pass those ranges and that analysis back and forth. So you can get really super granular in your GTO Plus exploration if you're trying to do some solver work. So definitely keep that in your back pocket. I'm not going to show how to do it in this video because it's a little intense and probably a little over the scope of this video, but it's very helpful to know that you have that option if you're thinking about getting a solver in the future, and GTO Plus is a great solver that I would highly suggest using. And I think that is going to wrap up this video. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully if you are brand new to Flopzilla Pro, you just got the software, you're trying to figure out how to get more out of it, hopefully this helps get you started. You know what's in the software, you know how to get things set up, you know how to get that pie chart running. Hopefully this gets you where you need to be going. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and of course a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and want to see more kind of software stuff or just like this video overall i really appreciate it too and you can always subscribe and hit the little bell notification as well again if you need anything at all don't hesitate to let me know otherwise i'll see you back later with a brand new video and in the meantime good luck out there and happy grinding